Lots of y'all have been asking me for some recommendations of anime, especially underground anime with badass protagonists and action and shit. And well, Nux kind of stopped doing that, so I'm his alter ego. My name's Fox, and this is my first video, so I hope you like it. 10 relatively underground action fantasy anime you might have missed that you should totally watch. Number 10, The Rage of Bahamut. Remember how Spike Spiegel's a badass, and that's totally because of his afro? Well, Favreau also has an afro, so he's also a badass. He's an asshole to everybody, and that's why it's so amazing to follow him on his journey. We're the best girl girl flips the tables again, and isn't the mysterious demon angel monster with tits, but the tailless lolly zombie that's literally one of the best female anime characters known to mankind. It's called the Rage of Bahamut based off the game Rage of Bahamut original name, which was an MMO so obviously had like little to no story. This on the other end is about Bahamut the dragon and how they try to stop it, try being a key word, cause everyone's a freaking loser. Second season's going on right now and it's actually really good, maybe even better than the first season. They knew what they were doing cause they managed to keep the lolly zombie, remember how everyone loved Favaro, don't worry, you won't be seeing much of him. The goodness is, this crap is action packed. OP demons just love fighting noble brick knights and assholes with crossbows. Literally the greatest thing ever in every girl's dream. In ninth place, we have Akatsuki Naona. People ask me for harem anime all the time, and since I value gender equality, this harem anime centers around a girl and her harem of like six guys. Everyone wants a piece of Princess Yona. This Yona chick has literally everything anyone would want in a protagonist. If you want a loser with plot armor that gathers a harem for no reason that basically turns out to be a worse female version of Kirito, you found one. Congratulations, Yona the Dawn, her and her entourage of Yaoi Guardians. Speaking of the Yaoi Guardians, each one of them is respectively more overpowered than Kirito is, so you got it from that side as well. In other words, this is quality crap. But this is not as popular as Sword Art Online, it's actually good. In 8th place, I have Casino Stigma. So this came out a while ago and obviously didn't end, but everyone seems to love that whole chick falls in love with protagonist because protagonist is freaking powerful thing. So I figured it would be perfect to put this on because protagonist is freaking powerful and chick falls in love with it for that reason. When Kazuma the Wind Mage was born into a Fire Mage family, they all freaking hated him because mages are racist pigs. Little do they know, Kazuma turned out to be freaking powerful, gathering their children as part of his harem, which again, would be considered terrible if it was more popular. But since it isn't that popular, it's way better than Sword Art Online. Number 7, Drifters. So Drifters just aired recently, but unfortunately it was overtaken by Yuri on Ice because gay ice skating is way cooler than epic warlords battling across space-time in an alternate universe with fantasy and monsters. Everyone loves strategic anime and strategic protagonists. So the second main character of this one is a strategic genius and also totally hilarious. Whereas the main character is cliche dipshit number 4, who manages to be overpowered and be able to take down the strongest of magicians even though he has no powers because bloodlust is way more cool and way more awesome than being able to summon infernos. Number 6, Legend of the Legendary Heroes. This is one of the most legendary anime names in history of mankind that'll make anyone die for this show. People call this guy a badass overpowered protagonist because when he unleashes his nine-tailed fox power, he's way stronger than everyone else. The good news is he doesn't know when the hell he's doing it and he almost never does it. That makes him weaker than the chick that follows him around everywhere. By the way, there's a chick that follows him around everywhere. Like most of these shows, she's sort of in love with him. Like none of these shows, she whoops his ass on a daily basis. Fantasy action shows also seem to have a knack for not getting finished, so this one doesn't get finished either. But it's actually pretty good, aside from the not getting finished part. If you want to know the ending to this, I suggest you go find source material. Not that I know what it is, because I put zero research into this list. Some fucks. Not Nux. Nux is awesome. Number 5, Guilty Crown. If you love an amazing story with incredible strategy, memorable characters, but as a freakishly disappointing ending, this is the thing for you. A totally original battle system, and a totally not based off Code Geass, first half of the story, leads us to the anticlimactic ending that everyone knows and loves, but people forgot about that because Inori is just sings so well, and his waifu material like crazy, making the first two openings of the show so amazing, everyone has to love it. The action and powers are pretty cool too, but if you look it's only 23 episodes, cause they were like holy crap this is bad stuff, we can't even drag this out to episode 26, and if you think I may be exaggerating, you're right. I am. The beginning's not that great either, but you know he's freaking cute, and the action's pretty cool. In fourth place, we have Darker Than Black. You know Batman? This guy's based off Batman. He has electric superpowers and he's a vigilante that runs around killing bad guys. Every episode he finds a new bad guy to kill. He's probably the most badass protagonist from anyone I have on this list. And his backstory is actually explained in like the last two episodes by using incredibly complex words that no one can understand, thereby quantifying themselves as incredible geniuses. This has a second season too, but uh, the second season too would have to fall into a different list because this list is about mostly badass protagonists, not hobos. And hey, the badass protagonist 
protagonist of season one becomes a hobo. In third place, I have Bungo Stray Dogs, a show that aired last year, and I don't really hear anyone talking about it, so it's here even though it's not really an underground anime. I like the crap out of this, both seasons, which totals up to 25 episodes. Starts off focusing on a wimpy-ass protagonist, like half the crap holes that come out these days, but starts focusing on the background cast, which is actually pretty amazing. When I say pretty amazing, I mean they're either blunt to the point of stupid, have an incestuous relationship with their sibling, or are incredibly suicidal. That's the background cast, and I love every single one of them. There are two major factions and a third one that's introduced in the last episode of the first season of people with powers that have to fight it out because people with powers in anime fight it out. They try to come up with reasons, but that's just an excuse to have the guys with powers fight it out. I'm being blunt, but it's a freaking amazing series. Number two, Zetsu and No Tempest. Everyone loves incestual relationships with their siblings, so Zetsu and No Tempest gives us a taste for an incestuous relationship with a dead sibling. Literally the greatest piece of art ever. About a dude so in love with his sister he doesn't want his best friend, who was the boyfriend of his sister, to love his sister, who in case I forgot to mention is dead. Nothing matters at all. This show has a climax around episode 13, 14 that's so amazing, the likes of which has almost not been seen in any other anime almost ever. The problem is the climax is so good, the actual ending of the show pales in comparison, but no one gives a crap, because that climax was so amazing, I remember it, like I watched it yesterday, and while there was some cool predictable stuff that happened at the end, it doesn't take away from the awesomeness that is the half point of the series. Oh yeah, they fight with magic and stuff, and high school boys are there, because high school magic fighters are literally the dream when it comes up to fighting against the universe of mages. And number one's Roka no Yusha, an anime that I'm going to continuously be putting on my lists just because everyone has to watch it. It knows exactly how to put four cliche slow episodes in the beginning before it gets you into an amazing story that no one gets to because of the cliche slow four episodes in the beginning. But trust in fucks, this stuff is good. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed. If you want me to do more of these top tens, let me know in the comments with a hashtag go fucks or something. I'll try to upload this video while Nux isn't looking. Maybe give you guys a few things to watch since Nux hasn't been doing his job recommending stuff lately. But anyway. Have yourself the most wonderful evening. I'll see you next time with another top 10 where I can brutally destroy 10 anime before recommending them to you. Bye bye.